Good afternoon, everybody, and thank you for joining us. This is Yoel Kortik, Senior Librarian at Ex Libris, and today we're going to be talking about using filters with Alma Analytics data visualization. This is actually for all the analytics on the, or on the OAS, the Oracle Analytics server, using data visualization. We're going to create a project in data visualization, and we're going to be looking at the four different types of filters, and we're going to be doing examples. So first of all, the four different types of filters are a date, a range, a list, and an expression. And we're going to see those live in a moment. The date uses the calendar controls to adjust the time, and we can drag it to the filter bar and either manually choose the date range or type in the date range. So let's take a look here. From within Alma, we're going to choose here Analytics. And from Analytics, we'll go into Data Visualization. We can go into Data Visualization or the Data Visualization for Primo. And once we click to go into the Data Visualization, the Data Visualization opens. And let's create a project so we can start looking at the various filters. And let's create a project in the fulfillment subject area. So we'll switch here to subject areas. And we'll choose the fulfillment subject area right here. And now we have a fulfillment subject area. So we want to do an example with a date. So let's take the loan date. So we can take the loan date folder and drag the loan date folder to the filter area. I'm dragging it right to the top where it says drop here to add a filter. And there's two ways we can do it. We can start typing here where it says start and end. Or we can say we want January of a certain year. I'll click the year where it now says 1990. And I can scroll forward. I can scroll backwards. Let's say, for example, we want January 2020. So I'll click the 2020. I'll click the 1. And now it's automatically January 1st, 2020. And let's say here I want also 2020. So first I'll click for the month, and I'll say February. And for the year, I'll choose 2020. I'll scroll backwards. And I'll choose 2020. And I'll say, for example, February 29th. So now I have a filter with January 1st, 2020 to February 29th, 2020. But I don't yet have anything in my visualization. So let's say, for example, I want to put in here the number of not in-house loans. And that's automatically giving me a visualization tile. And let's change that to a table. And let's put in there to also display the loan date. Right now, all we're doing is filtering by the loan date. Now I'll drag here to also display the loan date. And as you can see here, all of the dates fall somewhere between January 1st, 2020 and February 29th, 2020. Up to February 29th, 2020. The first loan is January 6th because there were no loans January 1st to 5th, probably on vacation for New Year's. In any case, we've created the loan date filter by choosing from the calendar. We could also have done differently, and instead of, I'm going to edit it, instead of choosing here, we could have just typed it in. I could have said I want from 1-1-2020. To, for example, uh, 2 29 2020, and enter, and it automatically fills it in. Let's say, for example, I want not 229, I want 214. I'll put in a 1 4, enter. Oh, I forgot my slash, enter, and now it's 214 2020. I'll simply click out of that filter. And now I have the filter up to February 14th. If we scroll down, we see it goes up to February 14th. So two different ways. I've done a date filter. First, by dragging up the loan date. 
and then by choosing a date within the calendar, and secondly, by typing in the dates manually. So that's the date example. Let's go on to the next one. Let's take a look here. So in addition to date, we've also got range. A range is used for measures or numbers which can be aggregated. Sometimes there's a number which isn't a measure. We'll save that for another day. But this is used for measures, which is a number which can be aggregated. So again, we're going to drag it to the filter bar on top. And then we can either manually choose the range by dragging the slider or we can type in the number. So let's take a look at that. Back to the project. And let's drag in, for example, the number of loans not in house, which we have down here already. So I'll drag that to the top, dragging it to the top. And now we can use the slider. For example, let's say I want only those which are between uh, Look at the numbers here. We get 439, 454, 452, 360. So maybe I want only those between 400 and 500. So I can drag this to somewhere around 400. And let's say 395. That's enough for our dragging. And then I can take this one and drag it to wherever I'd like. Uh, we said we wanted 500, so I'll drag it somewhere near the 500, close enough for our purposes right now, and click out of it. And now I have between 395 and 497, and you can see all of these are 395 and 497. If I want an exact amount, exactly 400, exactly 500, again, I can filter this and just type in here that I want from 400 to 500, enter, click out. You can see now the range is exactly 400 to 500. Click out, and now I've got a range, everything between 400 and 500. So that's the range. I'm going to remove this range right now because we're going to go on and we want a larger amount here for our purposes. So that's the range. Next, we're going to move on to, let's take a look here, after range, to the list. List is used for text and numbers, numbers which are not measures. Previously, it was a number which was a measure. And we're going to, again, drag it to the filter bar. And then we're going to select which ones we want. We're going to see different options. We can use the four lines on the top right to include or exclude selections. There's another four lines on the top left, which we can use to say the value we're putting is at the beginning or the middle uh, contains. Let's take a look at what we're talking about here. So let's go back to our same project. And this time, let's include, for example, the LC classifications. So we'll scroll down here to the LC classifications. There it is. And let's take the classification code. So let's display it and let's filter it. So now we've got all of these classification codes. Let's put that at the beginning here. Or let's actually put it in the middle. Okay. Now it's in the middle. And we'll drag it to the top so that we can filter. This is a list. Now, I can put, for example, an H. And now I have everything that contains an H somewhere. The first one is BH, H is at the end. The third one is HA, H is at the beginning. The second one is H, it has only an H. And that can be controlled here by saying I want it contains anywhere. I want it to begin or I want it to end. Let's say we want only those beginning with H. And once I have that, I can select all of them. And then I can say, do I want to include these or exclude these? Now you can see I have everything starting with an H. And that's because here it says include selections. If I say exclude selections like we just did now, exclude selections, let's click out. You can see there's a line through it, meaning I want to exclude. And nothing here starts with an H. You can see E, F, G, and then right to J. 
Let's change that though. So I'm going to edit that again. And instead of exclude, I'll say include and click out. And now they all start with H. So that's the list example. And now my favorite, the expression examples. Let's go look. Why is it my favorite? It's really the most powerful. And we'll see why in a moment. But you don't always need it. But it is the most powerful. Expression. Okay, it's possible to define more complex filters using an SQL expression. Uh, you choose the filters and then add expression filter. Drag a field from the left pane into the expression box. And then you manually start typing a filter. Let's say, for example, let's go back to the project. And I'm going to remove this classification code. Let's say we want to delete this one. So I'll click up here and delete. So now we no longer have that filter. You can see we have all classification codes. So what could I have done? On the bottom here, I'll select filter, add expression filter. And now I can just start typing in SQL. I'll drag in the classification code. And I'll say, for example, this classification code is like H percent sign that, which means it starts with H. And I can always do validate to make sure I didn't make an error. Invalid expression. Why is it an invalid expression? Because I have a double quote at the end. If I put in a single quote, again do validate, now it's OK. So it's always recommended to do validate before doing apply. Otherwise, you won't know why it's not working. So now it's good, and we do apply. And now they all start with H because I wrote a simple SQL for it. And of course, that can be a much more complex one. Let's, in fact, do something like that. So let's get rid of the loan date here, the loan date filter. We'll say delete. And let's make another one. I'm going to take this loan date, open it up so I can see it. And now when the filter is on the bottom again, we'll choose Add Expression Filter. And now we'll make something a little more complex. Let's say I want only those from the previous year. And I don't want to hard code it that only those from 2019. Because then next year, the previous year will be 2020, and I'll have to change it. I always want it to go to the previous year. I want it to be dynamic. I don't want to have to change the filter every, every year. I could do a day, too. So let's drag in the loan date. Now, there's, there's different ways to do this. So you might be saying, why is he doing it this way? Can't you do it this way? Yes, there's different ways to do this. And I'm going to say I want the year of the loan date. To be uh, greater than or equal to the year of time stamp add. You can see it always gives me suggestions, which I could take instead. Time stamp add, and then I'll say SQL TSI year minus one from the current date. Close the parentheses from the timestamp add. Close the parentheses from the year. Let's validate that first. Great, everything looks good. And apply. Let that work. And now you can see it starts only those from the year 2019, greater than the year 2019, because I said one year ago and the current year is 2020. So we have two expression filters working now. The classification code is like H um, percent sign, and the loan date is greater than the previous year, or greater than or equal to the previous year. So thank you, everybody, for joining us. That's an explanation of using the date filters in the data visualization, which is part of the OAS, the Oracle Analytics Server, which is an integral part of the Ex Libris Higher Education Platform. Thank you, and have a nice day.